Welcome back to a new video. In this video we will discuss another precision circuit, which will be a peak detector. We will discuss the working of this circuit, the operation, using the feedback in the operational amplifiers. And we will also verify these in SPI simulations. When you want to do a peak detector in a very simple configuration, you can use a passive diode peak detector circuit. That's shown here. You have your AC input voltage here, diode, and then you have your load here and also in parallel a capacitor in order to sustain that voltage. The problem here is, or the disadvantage here is the following. You have now your input voltage, which is blue, and the actual what you want is this red line, which is actually the peak value of your VS for the output voltage. But we know that the diode will have some voltage drop, and also the capacitor will discharge uh, also through this load resistor. So we get actually this pink line, which is not what we wanted. So in general, we can say it suffers from having one diode voltage drop, 700 millivolts approximately, depending again on the current flow here. The capacitor is not charged precisely, that is again because of this diode, to so the peak value of the input voltage. And a load resistor will draw some current because there is at some point open connection here so we get now also a discharge because of this RL. So this is going to be a problem. But this circuit is suitable if the peak to be detected is much 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 larger than the diode voltage drop. Let's say this is 100 volts or 200 volts for high power applications then this 0.7 volt is not really that big issue. So that's actually what we can say here. So most uh, applications where you have high power then we go for this and also for high frequency applications you also go actually for this passive peak detector configuration now if you want to overcome these problems you can use a precision diode peak detector that's shown here exactly actually as we have it there if you look at it this diode capacitor and it's also resistor but now we have a two operational amplifiers included now this circuit will be an active circuit so you will need power for these two op amps x1 and x2 and what you see is this circuit we have discussed before, that is our super diode, which is actually used also in the precision rectification. We have here our capacitor and this load here. And this uh, X2, which is our op-amp, is there to unload this so such that you have an, a high input impedance here between the capacitor and the load. So we can say the following. If this is the capacitor volt VC, then we can say the diode placed in the negative feedback here will create here a super diode. And this... X2, as said before, is functioning as operating as a voltage buffer or a voltage follower so that the current that can be supplied to the load is not dependent on something else. It is not discharging through this RL. And this capacitor is also not losing its charge. So it is actually provided by this X2. If this voltage Vs is larger than the capacitor voltage Vc, that's actually given by this statement, then the voltage difference between these two nodes of the op-amp X1 is positive. That will make the output of this or special amplifiers also positive, which will then forward bias the diode D1. But in a case where this Vs source voltage is less than the capacitor voltage, at some point this is of course charged, so you will not maybe reach the uh, value of the capacitor, then the voltage difference between these two nodes of this X1 is negative. That will make the output of this operation amplifier also negative. Will make the diode D1 reverse biased. Now since the diode is off in this second condition, the feedback loop which was created in the first situation is not there anymore. So that's broken. So you will get here that the operational amplifier X1 creates here a negative saturation level at this output because there is no uh, feedback anymore so you get actually the situation of sort of the bistable operation so it works in the open loop mode now the current flowing in the capacitor c is now in the reverse condition of this diode is the leakage or the reverse diode current and the input bias currents of the op amps okay let's see our example here we have now here a precision peak detector circuit given again the same circuit we have discussed before the input voltage vs here is given by minus 5 cosine 200 pi t volts so the frequency is here 100 hertz the extreme output voltages of each op amp is given as plus or minus 
8.5 volts. Now we'd like to calculate the peak output voltage, VO, that's this node, and we'd like to know what the extreme values of the output voltage, VA, of this first op-amp X1 is. Let's also designate here the node A here, and let's now look at our calculations. For question A is pretty straightforward. The peak output voltage is the peak value of the input voltage, Vs. So that means the V out peak is just this maximum value of our input voltage, which is 5 volts. The extreme values of our output voltage, so of this X1, operational amplifier X1, Va, is calculated using the situation where you have the open loop configuration and also the configuration where the diode is conducting. Now when the diode is conducting, that is the, when the diode is on, forward biased, then you have that the node voltage here, VA, is equal to the diode voltage, VD1, plus the capacitor voltage here, VC. Now that can be then written like 0.7, assuming that that is the 0.7 volts for the forward voltage drop across the diode, and the 5 volts because that is done the, capa the capacitor voltage. So in total we have here 5.7 volts. When the diode is off, so that means this is now no connection at all here, that means there's no connection also here, that means the operational amplifier is now working in the open loop configuration we discussed before, that means the VA minimum is the VO minimum of our operational amplifier, which is then minus 8.5 volts. Okay, now let's now look at the graphs for this situation. Now this is our blue graph input, which you see here minus 5 and going up to plus 5. That's because of this expression. And you see also the period here going from here to there all the way 10 milliseconds long. So that is then 0.01 seconds as the period. The output voltage here for negative values is zero. So you see that in the red curve. At some point, it is then at 2.5 milliseconds, it is reaching zero value for the blue line, and then it is increasing, becoming more positive. At that point, also the output voltage is shape of our RC network, and then approaching the maximum value 5, and then it stays there. This is going down, but there's nothing happening with the output voltage that stays 5 volts. What happens then with this node voltage VA? Now for negative values of your input, Vs, for this source voltage, the output voltage here, Va, is minus 8.5 volts, as we have discussed. Now when we reach this uh, time of 2.5 milliseconds, then it's getting the same shape as this red curve, so the pink one, and then it's approaching now 5.7 volts. So it is then 0.7 volts larger than the Vo. This is then there. And also the input is then going down, that means the capacitor voltage is now 5 volts, but the input voltage is now lower than 5 volts, so that means the output voltage of this first op-amp will then also again clamp to the negative extreme. And this will then stay there unless we increase the voltage to a higher level than the 5 volts. Okay, now let's bring this here and then look at our simulation circuit in Tina Ti Spice. This is now here the two operation amplifiers, the input voltage, the diode, and the capacitor and the resistor. So we have now chosen here a dual power supply of plus or minus 10 volts, not plus or minus 8.5. Why? Because the two operation amplifiers will also consume some voltage. So you lose approximately 1.5 volts depending on the circuit operation, also depending on the operation amplifier you choose. So that's the reason for having this 10 and minus 10 volts. I chose a resistor, load resistor of 1 kilo ohm, and the capacitor here 100 nanofarads. It's really random, so you can also choose different values. My diode is here 1N4148. Okay, let's now look at our simulation results. Here's the plot. We see here the Vs, indeed, as we have it for our expression here. And this is the V out, the red one, and this pink curve is our voltage at the output node of the X1. And this is the circuit we have discussed. What you see is we have a peak value indeed as 5 volts, as we have calculated. The maximum value of our output voltage at node A is not 5.7, but 5.5. .5. So we'll have 0.2 volts difference. That depends on the diode current and also other parameters in the circuit. So we have an error here, a little bit smaller than what we actually thought. It is not 0.7, but 0.5 maybe 0 0.45 or 0 0.65, depending really on the current flow in this diode. 
this is not a very big deal it depends of course on the application and the precision you want so a small error here we also see that this indeed the negative value of rva is minus 8.5 volts so as we have it and we see also that indeed the voltage here is increasing from this minus 8.5 volts at the 2.5 milliseconds all the way to zero and then making this transition to 5.5 volts you see also that in the red curves so going from the output voltage again starting at 2.5 because that is the value that's the point the time where the input voltage is becoming positive so increasing from zero volts to five volts so we can say this is indeed as we have expected a small error here just that but uh, the rest of the uh, values and the plots are ex exactly as we have calculated all right this was our example considering the peak detector circuit for the precision applications we have calculated the required values here and also verified these in spy simulations if you have any questions, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.